Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy Baker here of andybaker.com and owner of Kingwood Strength and Conditioning. And it is a Monday afternoon and we're fixing to start our, uh, uh, our deadlift workout. We've actually done a couple of warm up sets already. Um, but before we got going, I wanted to shoot a quick video and talk to you guys a little bit about deadlift assistance work. So um, I just had a conversation with the client about this um, a little while ago today. So um, I thought I'd share that uh, with you guys because I think it was some helpful information. So deadlift assistance work. Um, Basically, the topic of conversation was, is there a reason to do it? Does it work? And if so, how much of it should I do? Um, what should I do and where should I put it in my uh, weekly training split? How should I arrange the exercises? So um, let me start off by saying that the best way to drive up your deadlift is obviously to deadlift. You have to be specific with it. Um, I would recommend that just about everybody deadlift uh, once a week. Um, and then you can do variations later in the week, but at least one dedicated uh, session per week to your regular deadlift. Okay. My deadlift day, uh, usually falls on, uh, Mondays and varies a little bit week to week, but usually it's on Mondays and we'll start that workout with usually, uh, warmups plus three working sets, uh, on the deadlift week to week. The rep ranges vary. So you guys know, I'm a big a fan of my eight, five, two, uh, training program. And so I will, uh, I will vary the rep ranges week to week on a three week cycle going between eights, fives and twos. And that just keeps me fresh um, and keeps me progressing without getting stale doing the same uh, set and repetition scheme uh, week in and week out. So um, always start the deadlift day with deadlifts. The second exercise of that day varies a little bit week to week. And so basically what I do is I pick either a, another deadlift variation, okay, but it's always another heavy barbell movement. So it's either a deadlift variation, so it might be RDLs, stiff legs, deficit deadlifts, but some variation of a deadlift, or we'll do a good morning um, exercise, or we'll do a squat variation. And that might just be a, a regular low bar back squat with a little bit less weight than we used um, earlier in the week. Um, or we'll use a, a pause box squat, pin squats, front squats, high bar squats. So basically any kind of lighter deadlift variation, any kind of squat variation, any kind of good morning, is usually gonna be exercise number two that day. So we got deadlifts, and then our deadlift, squat, or good morning variation. And then the third exercise of the day is almost always a high volume, high repetition, low back exercise. Generally, that's gonna be either a 45 degree back extension, a 90 degree back extension, or a reverse hyper. So something to really pump a ton of blood uh, into the low back and pump up those lumbar muscles. And also you're gonna get some, uh, a little bit of hamstring and glute work in there as well. But really to target the lower back, what that has enabled me to do over the last couple of years is train the deadlift with a little bit more volume. So I needed to include a little bit more deadlift volume, but like a lot of you guys, uh, deadlift volume is hard. And um, I was always kind of a one and done type guy. So I do, you know, kind of one main work set and then that was kind of it, but I had kind of stopped progressing at a certain point. So I needed a little bit more deadlift volume. And so getting my back in shape to accommodate more deadlift volume. So sometimes up to like six sets because I'll do three sets of the heavy regular deadlift and then maybe three heavy sets of stiff leg deadlifts. And if your back is not conditioned right, it's not going to recover from or tolerate uh, those kind of training volumes and the workouts will take forever because you have to rest a long time between sets. So I started doing a lot of higher volume um, lower back work to try to get my back in better shape to accommodate the higher training volumes. Uh, and it has really, really worked well. So now that is a staple in my training program. Um, I know opinions are mixed on that. Some guys do well with uh, high rep, low back specific work. Some guys don't, so you kind of have to play with it and see, uh, but my back has responded really, really well to it. And I feel like it's in much better condition now than it was a few years ago to handle deadlift training volume. So um, that is on my deadlift day. Now, two days from now, I'm gonna do uh, a day dedicated to upper back training, okay? Um, and upper back training, obviously very important for the deadlift. Sometimes it's hard to get in on the deadlift day because your grip and just your overall fatigue level uh, and your low back is very tired from the deadlift. So doing lots of things like uh, heavy chin-ups, heavy pull-ups, um, heavy barbell rows, heavy T-bar rows, heavy shrugs. Sometimes those sorts of things are hard to fit in on a deadlift day. So we'll fit them in on a separate day of the week. So that basically gives me two back days per week, which is what I like. I, I kind of like to hit each muscle. Um, at least indirectly twice a week. And so we've got one back day that's basically deadlift oriented and another back day that's all the other stuff. So your rows, your pull-ups, your shrugs, um, things of that nature. So we've got our deadlift day. A couple days later, we're gonna do the back day. And then a few days after that or a day after that, I'll do my dedicated squat day. 
And the squat is probably next in line to actually training the deadlift itself in terms of deadlift progress. For me, at least, my, my deadlift has always gone as my squat goes. So if, my, if I'm training my squats regularly and making progress on my squats, I'm generally also making progress uh, on my deadlift. So you have to have the, uh, the dedicated squat, um, the squat training in there as well. So, um, and then after I'm done with my, uh, my heavy squats, um, usually that's on Friday, then I will uh, often do another deadlift variation, but it kind of just depends on how my back feels. So I've already done a lot of deadlifts, stiff-legged deadlifts, back extensions, maybe some good mornings, and then I've done a lot of barbell rows and pull-ups and T-bar rows and shrugs and things like that. So if my back feels like it's already been pretty worked and it's pretty fatigued at the end of the week, I may not do another deadlift variation. I may just do a ton of squats on Friday and that's enough. Usually at the end of the uh, squat day and the deadlift day, I'll incorporate just a couple of sets of heavy ab, ab work. Um, I feel like that's also helped a little bit and that's usually something just like uh, hanging leg raises, lying leg raises, weighted decline sit-ups, or I'll do um, heavy, uh, heavy crunches uh, using the cable machine. And I feel like that's uh, just kind of helped with my general work capacity as well. So um, that's basically it in a nutshell. Um, if you have questions, hit me up in the uh, comment section. I'll try to respond. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching and uh, we're gonna go get training here. All right, thanks.